What is up, everybody? This is Chris, and welcome to Lost in Comics, where we help you get lost on your comic journey. This is the weekly top three comics to read video for the week of January the 10th, 2024. And this was a gem of a new comic week. There are a handful of new comic book days every single year that we just get our expectations exceeded. New comic book days that make the task of creating a top three like this impossible. This was one of those weeks, so strap in. Let's get to this week's new comics, beginning with... Three... Fish Flies, issue number four from Image Comics, Jeff Lemire on writing, art and colors, and letters by Steve Wands. Fish Flies checks all the boxes of what I've come to expect from a great Jeff Lemire comic. Character development, check. Captivating plot and story, check. Mystery, check. Emotional resonance, check, check. Once a year, this Canadian town experiences an infestation of fish flies. These flies swarm the streetlights, cover the ground, and with them bring strange events. And that's where we find this story in issue number four. An unlikely friendship is forged between a girl that has struggled to find confidence in her appearance and acceptance from friends and family, and a criminal who is on the run, who has recently transformed into a giant fly. These unlikely friends share the same feelings of hating who they've become and what everybody thinks of them, but they have found comfort in one another. This issue also added a new layer of mystery and questions. As if the fish flies weren't bad enough, we have now become aware that there is something more going on in the woods in this town than we realized. Is it a cult activity? I don't know, but I'm very much looking forward to finding out and this pick is getting four jabronis freaking amazing i recommend now let's go on to two swan songs issue number six image comics w maxwell prince on writing martin morazzo on art and good old neon on letters what else can be said about this series it's been nominated for the lost in comics best comic series of 2023 find out tonight if it wins now a disclaimer before you read this issue of swan songs number one it's not a typical comic swan songs by nature is meant to be read like a one shot with each issue for focusing on the end of something. Issue number six is the conclusion of the series, focusing on the end of the sidewalk. And this issue is a full story written in several segments in the form of short poems. So that is your first disclaimer. Disclaimer number two, there are a lot of Ice Cream Man references in this issue. Doesn't mean that you have to read every single issue of Ice Cream Man to understand, but if you have, this issue is even more rewarding. And my last disclaimer, Disclaimer, this is an unbelievably sad, sad issue, yet so impactful, much like the entire series has been. And before I hear it, why do you like being so sad, Chris? How can you read so many sad stories? I don't like being sad, but sometimes in a moment of vulnerability, we can think and experience things that make us appreciate the things around us. Blessings that at times we just pass on every single day. And that's what this comic does for me. I wanna feel something when I read a book. I feel something every time I read an issue of Swan Songs. And in this one, we are following the story of Thomas, who's gone mad. He's sent to a psych ward. This causes the collapse of his family as his wife begins to worry about the stack of bills that are piling up. Now Thomas's daughter begins to feel the effects on her own life and seeks to drown out those bad feelings with bad vices. There's a hole in this family's life and in its core. And by the end of this issue, as a reader, you're left with the question, what will I do with this little time that I have on earth? What will be done before it's all ended? And you have very little time in your life when you break it all down. And this type of comic makes you appreciate your life and appreciate and put thought into how you are spending your life. Swan Songs issue number six, the perfect ending to a series about the end and a perfect ending deserves a perfect rating. This issue of Swan Songs is getting five jabronis. It is Lost in Comics certified. This is a must read comic. Are you with me so far? Are you not entertained? If you are digging what we do here on this channel, please do hit that like button. If you're new around here, welcome to the channel. I invite you to hit that subscribe button and tap that bell for notifications so you don't miss anything that happens right here on the channel. Y'all, 
Y'all, I am stoked. Tonight, Thursday, January the 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be joined by all these creators listed on the screen for the Best of 2023 Lost in Comics Award Show. I am told that it's the finest award show that takes place all year long, and you can watch it all live while you interact with other members of the comic community. So make sure you are tuned in for the award show, and if you miss it, you can always catch it on the rewatch. Now, I told you this was a great new comic book day. Now, it is time for the... It's the pick of the week. The pick of the week. Pick of the week. Oh, and this week's pick of the week, it's a good one. It is Ultimate Spider-Man issue number one, Marvel Comics, Jonathan Hickman on writing, Marco Cicchetto on art, Matthew Wilson on coloring, and VCs Corey Petit on letters. Here's the headline. Everything you want from a Spider-Man comic. That's the review. It's over. Look, we have been so thirsty for a Spider-Man story, a Spider-Man comic that we can have absolute confidence and trust in on new comic book day. And I, it might be too early to say this, but I don't think it's a stretch. I think we may have that book. If you remember in the Ultimate Invasion series, which I really enjoyed, the maker basically went back 20 years in the past in the new Ultimate universe and prevented the radioactive spider from biting a young Peter Parker. Now, the maker also prevented the other heroes of this world from being created. Now, that means that Peter is now 35 years old and has never experienced a life as Spider-Man. With certain events never happening, the whole landscape of the universe is changed. Spoiler alert. Uncle Ben is alive. Peter and MJ are married with kids and Aunt May has passed away. Now, those developments lead to some interesting story threads, but most of all, Peter has always felt like something is missing in his life. He's a fantastic father, a fantastic husband, but he feels that he's meant for more. And I won't spoil the end of this comic, but something fuels that belief in Peter. There is so much to love about this book, Peter and MJ together. How hard was that, Marvel? If they allow Hickman to carry out his vision for this comic, we are in store for a lot of fun in this universe, and I am excited to see how this universe is shaped. It's a fresh slate where anything can happen, and Marco Cicchetto shining bright in this book, he is made to draw superhero comics like this. Front to back, panel to panel, story to art, this was a perfect comic issue in my opinion. And perfect comic issues, they get five jabronis around here. This is Lost in Comics certified. It is a must read, a perfect jumping on point if you want to experience this new ultimate universe. Now this is the first time in the history of these videos that two comic books get a five rating in the same week. Now both Swan Songs and the pick of the week Ultimate Spider-Man were two books that made me feel something entirely different, but the key here is that they both made me feel something and that's what I'm looking for in great comics. Both books very deserving of the Lost in Comics certified stamp of approval this week. Now let's talk about some runner-ups. Blood Commandment, issue number three of four, Image Comics, under the One Man Art Comics imprint. Simon Kudransky on writing, art, and colors, and letters by Marshall Dillon. Now this is a really good vampire comic, but what makes this comic great is the built-in lore. The story of fathers and sons, the story of family, the story of Ezra, who left his previous life of being a vampire to protect his wife and son. But Ezra's past has caught up with him, and as much as he has sworn to leave his past behind, the past has come back in the worst way possible. The rules of the Blood Commandment have been revealed, and Ezra will have to become a monster to save his son from a monster. This book was this close to being in the top three this week. I continue to be impressed with Kudransky's work. I have always loved his art, but am now loving his work and this comic will get four jabronis. Freaking amazing. I recommend this book. Now, next up, Green Lantern, issue number seven from DC Comics. Jeremy Adams on writing, Armand K. Nahupan on art, Romulio Fajardo on colors, and Dave Sharp on letters. I read this issue early in my stack, and I thought for sure it was going to be in my top three. That's how solid this week was. This issue provided a nice backdrop for the story that's been ongoing. The events that unfolded prior to Hal coming to Earth, the loss 
of Kilowog, the treaty struck by Sinestro and the United Planets. I mean, how cool is it that we've already been fed so much in the first six issues, watching Hal's time back on Earth, but now... In issue number seven, we're seeing all the gaps being filled in with backstory. Jeremy Adams is killing it on this comic. And like I've said more than a few times, he's made me care about Hal Jordan. And this one is getting four jabronis. Freaking amazing. I recommend. Now, a few shout outs this week. Midlife or How to Hero at 50, issue number four. Image Comics, Brian Buccioletto on writing. Stefano Simeone on art. Now, Ruben is a middle-aged dude who just discovered that his powers counteract the very thing that he's feared the most his entire life, fire. Now, shout out to the shout out of Mitch's Hot Chicken in the pages of this book. If y'all know what that is, Mitch's Hot Chicken being the business that Mitch owned in the pages of Chicken Devil, another Brian Buccioletto comic. Very cool little Easter egg in the pages of this one. Let's give that issue for Jabroni's freaking amazing series. I do recommend it. Next Next up, we've got Sacrificers, issue number six, also from Image Comics, Rick Remender on writing, Max Fiumara on art. Now, this world continues to impress. The art, in my opinion, is one of the top three best drawn comics right now, one of the most consistently beautifully drawn books in the industry. Now, this book will be on hiatus until April 2024, and we will be ready for it, and I would give this issue a four jabroni score as well. Freaking amazing. I recommend this series. And just to let you know how great this week's books were, Transformers issue number four would also get a four rating. Action Comics 1061 also would get a four rating. So many great comics this week. Now, it's time for the... The Palette Cleanser Pick of the Week, and that is going to... Alice Cooper, issue number four, Dynamite. We've got Rodney Barnes on writing, Ed Mena on art, Adriano Augusto on colors, and Troy Petiri on letters. Now, this book is just the most fun that you can have in a comic book. This is like Devil Went Down to Georgia, the song, with Alice Cooper as Johnny. Facing the devil in a final showdown, winner takes all, but the devil plays dirty in this issue. We thought it was over after the events that occurred in the issue, but no, the final showdown is going to be in the conclusion, the next issue where Satan and Alice will play before the dead souls of the greatest musicians who ever lived. Now, this comic is the definition of what I consider a perfect palate cleanser pick. There's no deep thinking required. Just read it, enjoy it, have fun. I will read comics like this all day, every day. This week's palate cleanser pick is getting four jabronis. Freaking amazing. I recommend this series. What a week to be a fan of new comics. What books did you dive into this week? Did you read Swan Songs? Did you read the new Ultimate Spider-Man comic? Are you ready for the Lost in Comics Award Show? I want your thoughts. I want your opinions in the comments below. I thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay lost in comics, my friends. I will see you soon. Mm -hmm.